Big news in the AI world, because Sora is finally here. After 10 months of teasing us, we finally have access to the industry-leading AI video model from OpenAI. And it's doing some pretty incredible things. But there are some huge limitations to this model. And in this video, I'm going to show to you what's possible, how much it costs, and everything you need to know about the new Sora AI video model. So let's take a look at some of the videos coming out of Sora. So here we can see a very high degree of realism, uh, fantastic truism to life, and even complex motions like walking appear to be coming out effectively. Now, in this shot, we get to see some consistency of a character. And you see that not only his outfit, but also his facial features and even his haircut keeps consistency between different shots. And this is one of the keys for being able to work with AI video in more depth to create more complex projects. Now, one thing that all AI video models struggle with is creating legible text. And here we can see an example of somebody writing. Now, this is an incredibly important example for AI video. And that is because what we want to see is a truism to life, that we want to see that people are able to impact their reality. And what we mean by this is that when they write, we want to be able to see that they are actually writing and for it to make sense from start to finish. Whereas here, you might glance at this and think, oh, this is just a person writing. But as you look more closely, you can see that actually uh, it doesn't appear as if they are writing in a specific place. They are putting the pen in the middle of two lines and they are seeming to write in the middle of their story. And so there are a number of things that belie the realism of this. And the biggest one of all is that it's not clear that when this person touches the paper, that some ink is left. But however, I would love to draw your attention to some of the stronger features of this piece, which include the beautiful wrinkles on this man's hand or this woman's hand. And I adore how the candlelight affects the tonality and the lighting on this hand. You just see how it flickers and the light very well adjusts across the hand. So this is beautiful lighting. And also the hand is extremely anatomically correct. We do see an appropriate number of fingers and he's holding the pen correctly. Now this model appears to be doing exceptionally well with nature related shots. I would believe this must be something to do with the data that they've used to train it on. And you can see here the individual hairs on this plant sprouting out of the ground is absolutely ebullient. It's almost exploding out of the ground in a, in, it's almost like a dancing move. It, it has a wonderful rhythm to it, this piece. Just notice the fluidity. One issue that we often get with AI video is a lack of rhythm in our pieces. They can often feel very jittery and flickery, but Sora shows us a great sense of fluidity. Now, one thing that is important in watching any complex movements is to check if objects are appearing and disappearing at any point. Now. If you look at this at first glance, you would say it does look like a normal flock of birds. But as you look closer and try to follow the motion of a few of these birds, you will notice that they might suddenly disappear. Okay, there are two here. If you watch them going from the left of the screen here up to here, suddenly they disappear. And it is this type of temporal consistency that is a huge undoing of AI video right now. However, this can be mitigated through a number of techniques and strategies that we implore to use in our video creation process. Here we have an elephant in a spaceship, and this is an opportunity to demonstrate how we can use the advantage of AI video, because we can create scenes that would be otherwise impossible. And here we have a lovely silver elephant enjoying his time in space. And this is certainly where we get the biggest advantages of AI video, being able to take two concepts and combine them into a surreal reality. And because we have no benchmark for how they should look, we can be much more forgiving in our appreciation of these interpretations. Yes, likewise here, this is a really fantastic and elegant piece where we have this mountain range that is also an undulating ocean. And it's a, a fantastic, surreal, abstract piece. And it certainly emotes something within the human expression. Now, this is a wonderful example. It has a, a old film footage effect. It's almost a piece of historical documentary footage of an African organization. And it does have a wonderful sense of continuity between the shots. Just look at how consistent the effects are on these two different clips. And this really shows the power for Sora to generate various clips that 
maintain a sense of cohesion. And that's something that is incredibly important for AI video to truly start to interlace into a variety of different mediums and industries. And here we can look at this couple walking. And what I love about this is we get the demonstration of seeing them from behind and then seeing them from the front. And it has enough continuity for us to feel that it is a consistent set of shots. However, I would like to point out one issue is that it does not maintain perfect costume consistency. As suddenly this man now has a back and this woman is wearing a sweater. Whereas previously he has no backpack and she is wearing a white shirt. But I do want to draw your attention to one of the most challenging dynamic movements for AI and that is walking. Specifically when the characters are small and that there are multiple characters. But here you can see each of the legs is moving in a natural way and they are moving across the ground at an appropriate speed. Now if you even compare that to one of the first demonstrations that was released by Sora back in February, this was probably one of the most impressive demonstrations that we saw and it was of this woman walking through Tokyo. Now just look at her feet and you will see that she seems to be almost sliding over the ground at different points. She also often takes unusual steps that they are not consistent as you would walk, imagine somebody to walk with a, there we are, that's a point here. Just look at her here, suddenly she starts to glide across the ground as if the, the ground is made of ice. So we, we've seen an improvement in dynamic motion. And this is important because the Sora model that we are getting access to is not the one that was previewed at the start of the year. And there are a number of interesting differences. Firstly, the model from the beginning of the year reportedly took an age to generate videos. And that's why this model that they've released is called Sora Turbo, and it generates videos much faster. The other big difference is that the original model could generate videos up to one minute in length. Now with Sora Turbo, users can create videos up to 20 seconds in length. Now that is actually the longest for a single clip across any AI video generator that is currently available. Now for access to Sora, currently this is only accessible in the US and to paying ChatGPT customers. ChatGPT Plus subscribers who pay $20 per month for the service will now be able to create up to 50 videos at 480p resolution. Those videos will last up to five seconds in length. Now that equates to around 40 cents per video if you're only including this for the pricing. And that is fairly expensive compared to other models, which can come down to as low as one cent per generation. Now, those who pay for the new ChatGPT Pro subscription, which is their latest release, which not only gives you unlimited access to the ChatGPT01 model, but it also now gives you unlimited generations and the possibility to create 20 second videos with 1080p resolution. Now that does put it at the very top end of the market for the price but it obviously gives you a whole lot more possibility to create video. But let's take a closer look at the user interface that is available in Sora. And as you can see, it's possible to select the different resolutions. You can work on this at between 480p and 1080p. Now this takes longer to generate depending on the resolution that you pick. The overall layout for Sora is very similar to how we see most AI video models approach this. We have a gallery, we have a prompt bar, and we have a number of tabs on the side where we can organize our creations. Now, the interesting part is noting the different UI elements that are included in the prompt bar. This allows us to select different aspect ratios so we can have either landscape, square, or vertical videos. We also get the option to choose our length from five to 10 to 15 and even 20 seconds, which is remarkable. Now, the final option you'll note is that we have storyboard. And what that does is it allows us to use a tool to help you visualize the actions, sequence, and timing in your video. Use photos, videos, and text to describe each shot along a timeline before generating your final video. And this is an innovative approach to taking more control over exactly what happens inside of your AI video. We're able to look at a timeline and put in different markers along that timeline that will define what is going to happen at that frame. 
then the AI video model will work to blend between each of these checkpoints to create more complex, dynamic, and changing videos. The team at OpenAI gave us a live demonstration to announce Sora, and during this they showed us exactly how the storyboarding feature can be used. And you can see here that it starts off with an image, and then it progresses to popping in a text prompt where this has been placed at the five second mark. And the text prompt describes how the scene will develop. And here you can see from the outputs from that, it gives you different options that manage to conform to the instructions from the piece. This is a interesting way to approach the generation of AI videos, where essentially we're image prompting a first frame and we're image prompting a final frame. We're then asking the AI to interpolate between those two points. Now Blaine Brown on Twitter has been demonstrating some of the uses of the different features inside of Sora. Here he's demonstrating the blend mode. And what the blend mode allows us to do is to define a start frame and an end frame and then create the video in between them. So here we have the start frame which is of this castle and the end frame which is of a couple running. And as you can see the AI is able to then integrate how that would work. However, there are some issues with this because suddenly the runners come in and they're almost flying in the sky, whereas we would probably like them to be seated on the ground. But I do like the beautiful articulation of this lady's ponytail. Now he has another couple of examples. This one demonstrates how two videos are created from the same prompt and then they are used to blend them together. And this way we get a lovely dynamic transition and what is particularly interesting is the ability of Sora to blend between two quite disparate shots. Now here is another example from Nick St. Pierre. This is demonstrating the image to video feature. And I must say that this is absolutely exquisite. Simply look at how wonderful the light refracts of the beautiful shining feathers from this bird. Now not just that, but the, the jittery movements of this lovely exotic bird wonderfully mimic reality. Now this has been released as day three out of 12 of, of OpenAI's 12 days of AI announcements. So we are expecting some other exciting announcements to come out of the team this week. Now in the last week a number of people have been given early access to use Sora, including Marcus Brownlee, and he has displayed a number of examples that he created during his time of early access. Here we can see a stop motion clay motion footage of Santa punching a snowman, and you can see that this style is accurately rendered, however the composition is rather lackluster, it's far too zoomed in, and the character design yeah, actually leaves quite a lot to the desire of an artiste. Though he has demonstrated some beautiful examples of more artistic mediums, and this is certainly where he says that this model comes alive. Verbo AI services for freelancers and entrepreneurs. With Verbo, offering AI services is now easier than ever. For freelancers on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork, Verbo gives you the set of skills that allows you to offer services like multi-language dubbing as well as advanced content creation, all powered by AI. You can offer clients the possibility to create AI explainer videos using this tool and sell that as a service on platforms like Fiverr and Upwork. Now, best of all, there is no complex skills to learn, no need for expensive software. You can do it all simply from the app. Just input your text and image and let Verbo do all the heavy lifting. All you have to do is sit back and rake in the cash. This is perfect for freelancers, marketers, and entrepreneurs who are looking to add extra revenue streams to their business. You can offer these services and rake in high rates for simple projects. Verbo makes creating high quality content easy and scalable, so you can build out your own digital AI agency. Try it out today and see the difference that AI can make for you. So how does this model compare to the other competitors on the market? And is it worth investing in? Well, I think there are some strengths to the new Sora model, and this specifically includes their new storyboard approach, and also the fact that they can create 20 second long videos. Now, one of the best uses that I see coming out of the new Sora model is for nature style shots, for highly realistic images and videos of the natural world. This is where I think it is actually the best at creating realistic videos. Now, where Sora evidently falls down is firstly, it is uh, fairly expensive to use, 
And secondly, is that it is so restrictive for anything that is remotely fun. Now, most AI video models do have a level of restriction, but it is possible to create things that have celebrities, that have uh, action and violence, and even some light sensuality. And I do recommend that Minimax is actually the best option for this. And this is a tool that came out of China and gives you a whole host of opportunities to create things that are more fun. Now, the other big issue currently with Sorum is that it's completely overloaded with applications and it has crashed their website. But this will obviously come back online very shortly. Now, the fact that you get Sora included in a ChatGPT subscription is an incredibly attractive offer. I already have ChatGPT Plus, and so I will enjoy being able to use Sora on top of that. It's interesting to see that OpenAI is taking an approach to a one subscription to get access to all AI generative tools. And I think this could certainly set it apart for the casual user. But if you're a serious filmmaker, a serious creative who is actually wanting to take this technology and use it in your creative projects, I don't think it's the best way to go right yet. I think that the best options are certainly Runway, Kling, and also Minimax. Now we're also starting to see a movement towards open source AI video models, and they are getting better and better. And it's only a short time before they are at the same level as the Sora model and other competitors. And that is going to be a huge challenge for any AI video model business. Now, just a few days ago, this Sora model was actually leaked to the public by a group of disgruntled artists. They had all been given early access to test out this new Sora model, and they banded together in protest to release the AI model because of the way that they say open AI are treating artists. Now, the training data for this model and many AI video models is completely unclear and remains a gray area in the law. However, it does not surprise me if many of these models have simply been trained on vast amounts of film, TV, and YouTube content. If we look at some of the examples coming out of Sora, you can even start to get a feel for the type of content that it's likely to be trained on. Here we can see this woman in a silver metallic outfit and what's wonderful here is certainly the reflection of her outfit in the window. It's wonderful how it captures that and also maintains consistency as she moves. But the, the key thing here is to note the, the feel. There's a high degree of saturation and it certainly feels as if it has been taken from a sci-fi film. Now, many of these examples have a real feeling of stock photography or stock footage. And it's important to note that Shutterstock, for example, uh, completely sells its rights to its entire library to AI companies for training. And this is done with very little remuneration for all the contributors to Shutterstock. Now, a number of companies have started to implement uh, very dodgy looking uh, amendments to their user agreements. Recently, Udemy, which is an online course provider, has an amendment in their user agreement where unless you opt out, uh, your courses that you create can be used by Udemy to train their AI systems. And secondly, also Figma, which is a design tool, also has an amendment which either allows you to opt in or opt out of allowing your designs to be used to train their AI models. If you are interested in completely free options, I have a video detailing the best available AI video generators that are free here. I believe that we are moving forward at a great speed. And the best thing we can do is try to take advantage of the new opportunities that present themselves. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help explain, demonstrate, and showcase some of the latest demonstrations of AI technology and creativity. And if you'd like to join me on these AI adventures, do feel free to subscribe. I thoroughly appreciate it. But most of all, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I wish you a delightful day.